Hi guys, this is Andrew with Headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show, and today we're going to take a look at the difference between the Aslan Kern SR25, which recently got released, and the Aslan Kern SR15, which has been a staple portable player for a long time. For anyone unaware, these are both digital audio players, or DAP for short, and this one comes in, the SR25 comes in right at around $699. So let's take a look. All right, so as I mentioned, the SR15 is the portable audio player that I recommend for anybody wanting a small pocketable device that you know replaces having music on their phone. You can just go out for a walk or wherever you are portably and this works great. And now the SR25 has been released, which uh, is meant to be the, the, the upgrade over the SR15. So there are a number of changes that we need to talk about with this. There are a few things that have stayed the same and then there are a few things that are just different. So we're gonna go through the ones that I think are fairly important in this video. So what stayed the same is actually the DAC chip that they're using in these. This is using the dual uh, Sirius Logic 43198, uh, and it was great in the SR15, and it's excellent in the SR25 as well. Uh, they're both, once again, using Android. However, the functionality is a little bit different, and we'll talk about that. Uh, and they both still retain the somewhat angled-looking screen. Uh, so the idea here is if you're holding it in your hand like this, as you can see like this, uh, the screen is actually tilted slightly so that it remains upright for where you're looking at it. It is kind of cool when you do start using it and you realize that that actually makes a lot of sense. And that angled screen was effective on the SR15 and it's effective on the SR25 as well. Now one of the most important features for me with digital audio players is a built-in EQ or something that you can do system-wide EQ with and the SR15 was one of the better choices for that because it had a multi-band EQ, not parametric unfortunately, but you could still do quite a bit of adjustment on this one. So you know if you had an IEM that you weren't completely thrilled with its tonality or it had certain issues you could uh, you could change it with the SR15 and I'm happy to report that they still have it on the SR25. This also has an EQ built in as well. And lastly, they both do have streaming functionality with Tidal and Cobuzz and Spotify and all that. Now remember, if you want to use offline playback for that, you got to download the offline APK for it, but it's very easy to do. And actually, they have a guide on how to do that on their website. So it's very, very simple to do. And if anybody's getting one of these, I highly recommend doing it because that, in my mind, is the best use case for the SR15 and SR25. All right, so let's now talk about what's different. And we'll start with the upgrades. The SR25 now has native DSD-256 and 32-bit at 384K Hertz. Now to me, that doesn't matter at all. Uh, but I know some of you guys out there are into DSD, and so if you're if you're looking for some high-res DSD playback, uh, this does have it, it is available. Uh, but like I said, that's not something that I care about. I think the only important thing to note here is that the older SR15 uh, only had DSD-128 and then it was converted to PCM, whereas with the uh, SR25, uh, you do get uh, native DSD-256 on here. Another interesting upgrade is that the SR25 now supports LDAC functionality, and with the prevalence of wireless devices out there, this is starting to be an important uh, feature to include. And so if you have any Bluetooth audio devices that you want to make use of, uh, this starts to be a very important upgrade on the SR25. And the last two important upgrades here are uh, navigation speed with CPU and then also battery life. So the CPU has been upgraded with the SR25, uh, so you get way faster and smoother navigation through all the menus, and I found it way easier to navigate to the songs that I wanted to listen to and scroll through and everything. And to me that matters a lot because I find that that's one of the key drawbacks for using digital audio players is that they're never gonna be as fast as your phone. And with the upgrade here for the CPU and the SR25, it closes that gap a little bit. Uh, still not as fast as on a phone, but it's much better than on the SR15. And then lastly, you get way better battery life on the SR25. I think it says something like 21 hours on this, but I haven't had to charge this yet, and I've been using this for about four or five days. <laughs> uh, not straight, obviously, just you know regular use. So I think it's not just that you get more battery life out of it, I think it's also that it, it optimizes when you're not using it uh, a little bit better. And so that's a huge upgrade, in my opinion. Uh, whereas I, I found that actually the battery life in the SR15, that was a bit of a drawback. So they've definitely improved that. All right, so those are the upgrades that are important to consider, but there are also a number of changes. The SR25 is noticeably bigger than the SR15. So if I like line them up here, this is quite a bit bigger. The, the SR15 has always been, you know, the, the pocketable device. 
And the SR25, I think, is still pocketable, but you're gonna need a little bit larger pockets. <laughs> so if you're trying to maximize portability, I think the SR15 is, is probably still the way to go. But I think actually for most people, the form factor, so the size and everything of the and, the, and the weight of the SR25 is gonna be totally fine. This is still smaller than, you know, something like the iBasso DX220. Uh, and the other really nice advantage with the larger size is that the screen is a little bit larger, meaning it's a little bit easier to, you know, hit all the buttons on it. I actually found with the SR15, I'd often make an error, whether it was, you know, typing in passwords or, you know, tracks that an artist or tracks that I was trying to find. With the SR25, I don't have that problem at all, because not only is the navigation faster, but the screen is larger, so you, it's just easier to use overall. Also important to note is that the SR25 now uses USB-C, whereas the, uh, the SR15 doesn't, this is I think micro on the back. And then lastly, the other important change to keep in mind is that the SR25 actually has different output impedance for both of its outputs here, both single-ended and balanced. Uh, now they both do have 3.5 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter, uh, 2.5 for, for balanced. Uh, and with the SR15, you get uh, 1.1 ohm output impedance on the single-ended. I think it's like 1.6 on the balanced. And then with the SR25, the spec sheet at least tells me that uh, the 3.5 millimeter output here is 1.8 ohms output impedance, so up from 1.1 to 1.8, and then the balanced output here is 1.6 ohms output impedance. So the, the balanced output apparently is the same, and it's, it's interesting because usually the balanced output has higher output impedance, at least in my experience, but in this case it is lower. This probably won't make a huge difference for most headphones, but there are some headphones where this will make a difference, specifically highly sensitive uh, multi-balanced armature IEMs like the Campfire Andromeda. There are a lot of people who actually prefer the Andromeda off of a slightly higher output impedance source rather than less than one ohm output impedance. So if you have something that's at 1.6 or 1.8 ohm output impedance with the SR25, uh, that may actually end up being preferable for the Andromeda because it will curb the bass a little bit. Of course, if you're using IEMs like the 64 Audio stuff with linear impedance design, this won't make any difference whatsoever. All right, so the big question is, does the SR25 sound any different from the SR15? Well, in my testing, I couldn't tell any significant difference uh, between the two, at least not significant enough for it to matter over the functionality benefits that you do get with the SR25. In fact, I think this is probably a case where I probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference in a blind test. Once again, the one time you may notice the difference a little bit more strongly is if you're using something like the Campfire Andromeda that does change quite a bit depending on its uh, the, the output impedance of the source. I actually did try it with the Empire Ears Zeus 14. Right here, actually, the main reason I was testing with the Zeus 14 is this has hiss on just about every single source you put it on, uh, and I was trying to see if I could find it with the SR25 and the SR15, and these are the two sources that uh, actually perform reasonably well with the Zeus 14 uh, because they don't have the hiss that you get from like just about everything else. I think if you really listen for it, it's there in the background, but it's still pretty much better than everything else except for maybe the iBasso DX220. And then I tried it with the uh, Final Audio A8000, which is this one here. This is a highly detailed IEM. And so, you know, the thinking is, well, if you have something that's really resolving for the headphone that you're listening to, then it may reveal more of a difference in the source. But once again, I could not tell the difference. Lastly, I had to try it with something a little bit more difficult to drive. So this is the Hi-Fi Man Aria. Uh, this is a little bit more difficult to drive than, you know, the Ananda and the rest of the, the Hi-Fi Man line. It's a little bit more uh, traditionally planar in that sense. And uh, both of them powered it just fine. But I actually didn't notice any difference on the volume side either for how far I needed to go. Uh, at least not, not a significant difference. So uh, it makes me think that the output power for both of them is also probably the same. So really the difference between the SR15 and the SR25, at least in my opinion, is more on the features side than the sound quality side. And I think that's to be expected. And that's a really nice thing because the SR25 is also coming in right at around the same price as what the SR15 has been right at around $699. The SR25 is an upgrade over the SR15 in many of the ways that the SR15 I think was uh, a little bit lacking, like for example, the battery life, and then of course the navigation functionality and the screen size. And then for anybody who may consider using this as a source for any of their Bluetooth devices, 
yeah, this is this has it now and it performs great. If you already own an SR15, it probably isn't worth it to upgrade to the SR25 unless you see yourself using those features like for example, the LDAC that's in here or you think you might require the extra battery life because then I do think it's worth it. The other drawback for the SR25 is of course the size increase, but I think the size increase here is appropriate. And so really, I think if you're looking for a high-end digital audio player that's around the $700 mark or somewhere around there, the SR15 essentially just got a lot more competitive, it got a lot better than the SR25, and I do think that it's a solid choice in this price bracket. You get a ton of features, you get EQ in here, you get all the good things that you had with the SR15, uh, coupled with better battery life, better performance, and ultimately a more usable functional package. And so in my mind, at $700, this is probably one of the best choices you could have. Uh, just keep in mind that it does have slightly different output impedance, so if you have, again, headphones like the Andromeda, this may actually change the frequency response a little bit. Anyways, that does it for this comparison. Thanks for watching. If you guys like what I'm doing, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.